Hello and welcome. My name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist here at the Top Tour RVA located in Richmond, Virginia. Today, for my second episode of Back to Basics, we're going to talk all about raised stencils. How to make them, how to use them, and how they can make your project go from blah to fabulous. Look at that texture. Look at that depth. I'm going to show you how to do this. It's very simple. Stay tuned and get ready to have some fun. Okay, so this is the second episode for Back to Basics. The first one we covered gel stain and all things gel stain. If you missed it, you can go back and see it. It's saved here on my YouTube channel. Today is going to be raised stenciling. It's actually really easy. You only need one product and you can use any stencil you like. I like to use these thicker Mylar stencils from Dixie Bell. The one that I'm gonna be demoing today is called Mud Cloth. It's actually brand spanking new. You might not even have seen it yet. It's given me this gorgeous textured finish on the sides of this piece and the front doors. So I'm going to show you exactly how to get this effect. Okay, so creating a raised stencil is easy. That one product that you need to make it and make this happen is Dixie Belle Mud. Dixie Belle Mud comes in three different colors, white, brown, and black. And for a raised stencil, it really doesn't matter what color you use because you're gonna be painting over top of it when you're done. So you need mud to create this project. The second thing you're gonna need is a Mylar stencil. I'm using the new mud cloth from Dixie Belle. This Mylar stencil is actually nice and thick. I like the thickness of it. So when you're actually doing the mud, it sits inside really easily. It's easily washable. I take it out size and just blast it with the hose. Um, you don't want your mud going down your drain. That's my handy dandy tip of the day. No mud down the drain, it might clog up your pipes. So I just take the stencil after I'm finished with it, outside, hit it with the hose and it cleans up wonderfully. All right, so you need mud, you need stencil, and you need a way to put this mud on your project. So what are you gonna use? Well, I'm gonna show you something new and fabulous today. It's brand new, you haven't even seen it yet. I'm gonna show it to you. Okay, so when I apply my mud normally, I use a plastic spatula. We know these, we've seen these, everybody has one of these. We actually sell these on the Dixie Belle paint page and I buy a couple every couple months because I tend to really junk them up with product. I use them for paint dragging, I use it for the raised stencil. It's a multi-purpose tool. So get a couple. If you haven't had a chance to find these, go grab a couple. They're always good to have in your toolbox. So what's the new product that I'm talking about? This is new and exciting. This is a brand new product from Dixie Belle called a thingamajig. Have you ever heard of such a silly name? So this thingamajig is actually perfect for stenciling. It's amazing for raised stencil and it's amazing for the silkscreen stencils as well. It's bendy, it's rubber, it's in the package and it's gonna help you push your product through the stencil and get it on your piece. Okay, I'm bringing you in nice and close so that you can see how pretty this raised stencil is on the sides and the front of my piece. The other reason I like those Mylar stencils is because they're really, really big. So I could do the whole side of this piece in this beautiful raised stencil and you can get any desired effect you're looking for. It looks gorgeous with paint, it looks gorgeous with dry brush. Whatever you decide to do, this raised stencil is gonna take all of your projects up a notch. So I did it on the sides and I did it on the front of my piece and I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. Let's begin. So you're gonna need a couple little things here that might make your job a tiny bit easier. I like to tape up my stencils so they stay stationary when I'm working, when I'm spreading my mud, and they don't move around. So you're gonna need a roll of blue painter's tape or whatever you have handy. I like to pull off my pieces and have them here so that when I'm working, say, on the side of a dresser and I position something a certain way, I don't have to stop and rip tape off. So I always rip off a couple and stick them wherever I'm working. So this is just a plain board, and I'm gonna show you here on this board how to do the raised stenciling. It's exactly the same technique that I use to get this effect on this little wash stand, all right? So here's my mud cloth stencil. And like I said, you can use any kind that you want. There's mud cloth, there's damask, there's hound's tooth. I mean, the options are endless. They have a ton of really great stencils. I'm just gonna stick it up here and tape it so that I can hold it still while I show you how to achieve a raised stencil. So the mud that I have here is actually, it's 
it's almost empty. We've almost used the whole entire thing. I use Dixie Bell's mud for filling holes if I wasn't using the same hardware. I use it for raised stenciling. I use it if I have like a missing spot of veneer. This stuff is gold to me because when it dries, you can sand it back flat and it's really, really easy to use. All right, so we're gonna play with the new tool today and we're gonna do it old school with the spatula. You're gonna take your spatula and you're gonna go ahead and scoop out a nice big hunk. We're not gonna get technical here because there's really no measurements. The way that I do this is entirely by look. So I'm gonna start here at the top. Once you put your mud down, you're gonna find that your stencil stays pretty much in the same spot. Now you can see that I'm pulling it back fairly flat. Remember I told you these Mylar stencils are actually pretty thick. So when you do peel this off, you're gonna be able to see the raised effect easily. I like to cover the entire surface with my Dixie Belle mud and not really smooth it out because I'm gonna show you a trick on how to get a smooth raised stencil when we're done. So you're just gonna keep going. Grab it, smooth it out, and go get another mud because this one's almost done. Okay, so let's move on to the new tool, the thingamajig. It's really called that, I'm not joking around. It's called the thingamajig. So this is actually a silicone tool. What this tool is gonna do is help you bend and push whatever it is that you're putting, whatever product it is that you're using for your stencil, whether it be the Mylar stencil or the silkscreen stencil, this is gonna help you push the paint through. Personally, I think I would use this more with silkscreen stencils because they have like a mesh that you're really trying to push your paint through. This project for me, I think that that tool is gonna to work better, that little plastic spatula, but hey, it's new. And I told you, we're gonna try all the things. So I grabbed another mud since that one was empty. This is actually the mud in black. So this might work well so that you can actually see the difference of how it is applied. Check it out, it's so dirty. There's no clean painting. I'm always gonna have this stuff all over me. So let's apply this mud to our board. It goes on in the same manner as the other one. You're just pushing it down, smoothing it through the Mylar stencil onto your piece. So if this was say like a drawer of a dresser or like a whole side of a dresser, I would then just continue this process until the entire area is covered, right? You wanna do whatever it is that you're working on, whether it be a drawer front, a section of the drawer or the sides. So you continue this process using either your thingamajig or your Dixie Bell plastic spatula to get the look that you want. Since this is silicone, you can clean this in warm water. The same with your spatula, remembering that you don't put your mud down the drain, right? Do it outside, make sure you clean them up outside and you can reuse this stuff multiple, multiple times. Super cute little tool. That was the first time I tried it. I kind of dig it. So now my mud is on my project. My drawer front is covered or my side is covered. I like to remove my stencil when my mud is wet. The reason I like to remove it when it's wet is because mud itself is still kind of a little bit fragile, right? It's a water-based product and I kind of like to remove it when it's wet so that it stays true to its stencil. If you wait for it to dry, you take the risk of it cracking or not um, being removed easily because it's stuck to your piece. So you would just peel off your stencil and this is what you're left with. And I have this dry, so I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like and how we're gonna get a perfect smooth stencil. So this is the back of my washstand. I actually experimented with the stencil on the back of the washstand to see what it would be like. I always like to try things before I use them. So this is actually dry. So let's pretend that this is the same piece of wood that we were just playing on. So this piece is now dry. So you can see these tiny little raised details. You see maybe when you're pulling your spatula that sometimes it's not completely even. So what do you do? How do you get rid of these tiny little raised details? These little pieces that stick out. You want a smooth surface for your paint, right? Well, enter in rad pads. What are rad pads? These are a little sanding pad that Dixie Bell sells um, and you can use them and they're really easy to use because you can bend them. They're kind of foam on the back. They're really good to get around the edges. So I like them. I say grab the very fine to fine, all right? So I always look for the red one because I know it's very fine. And what I'm gonna do now is take my rad pad and I'm going to gently rub 
and sand back that mud to smooth out my stencil. What do you think? Can you see the difference now between the pokey bits over here, the pieces that are kind of uneven versus this nice, smooth, sanded stencil? Now don't go too far. You don't need to be crazy with the brad pad. You just need to give it a light sand all the way across. Removing any of those pieces that were raised and sticking out. And then you're ready to protect your work before paint. The next step I'm gonna show you is a necessity. I think it's one that maybe people skip and I'm gonna tell you why you have to do it. So now your stencil is dry and you have sanded it back. It's nice and flat and you're ready to paint, right? You wanna jump right in and start painting. But guess what? Remember I told you that that mud is a water soluble product? If I come in here with a ton of wet paint and a really heavy best dang brush, that's gonna move, it's not gonna stay sharp. You want to protect this before you put any paint on it. So there's a couple options here and I'm gonna tell you the one that works best for me. I like to use Dixie Belle's Boss. Um, the reason I like Boss is because it's a primer. It's my primer for bleed through, any stains, any smells, but it's going to seal my stencil in and make sure that the mud is gonna stay nice and sharp when I'm ready for paint. If you decided you didn't want to use boss or you didn't have any boss at home and you still wanted to seal this before you jumped in and started painting, you could always just seal it with a clear coat, with your gator hide, with your satin clear coat, um, or you could use your boss in gray um, or clear even. It doesn't matter. You just want to seal this and get it prepped for paint. So I'm going to take some of this boss, and this just happens to be the white, okay, and I'm going to put it into a container. Now, I like to use a little handy dandy roller rather than a brush especially since I just throw these away rather than, you know, wash them and reuse them and fight with trying to get boss out of my great brushes. My brushes are like a precious commodity around here. I don't want to ruin them. So I like to use these tiny little rollers to roll on my protective coating. When it's completely dry, that's when you're ready for paint. So this right here is just going to protect my work and allow the stencil, once this is dry, to be ready for paint. So that's it. Today you learned everything that you need to know about how to create a beautiful raised stencil. You can see how this ombre painted beauty highlights all of those gorgeous details, how the black wax sits in and the raised stenciling comes out. It creates a really gorgeous effect on a tiny piece of furniture. I hope that you give it a try and I hope that you learned something today about raised stenciling on Back to Basics. I'll see you again next time. Thank you for watching.